All right. Hi, everyone. Um, okay, so this this painting is going to be similar to our tulips for everyone that was there for that painting. So idea, right, is focal point flowers, and we don't want to paint every single flower. So um, I'm going to kind of walk through the underpainting. I'm going to do an alcohol wash. Um, the underpainting, I'll send over the colors, and, and Leah and I were kind of talking how it distorts the color on uh, through Zoom, so don't worry too much about the color. Um, what we want to focus on is values, the lights and the darks, so um, really look at <clears throat> our picture. You know, remember the planes, the up and down planes like trees and mountains get less light, so they're darker. So when we're thinking about uh, laying in our underpainting, we're going to be painting these a darker color. Um, and then the plane where we have the field, it's going to be lighter because the sun is hitting and reflecting, right? Um, and our lightest usually is up here in the sky. So again, just <clears throat> running through the method of how we choose what values for what subject. Um, and I'm going to send over the reference photo in black and white as well to you, so you have it, because <clears throat> that does help. Um, and then I'm going to send you the underpainting. And for those, if you're not doing pastels, um, you can do in pencil and charcoal, but I think everyone here is not pastels. Here's the gridded form to give you an idea for proportion. Um, and then I decided to do kind of a pinky red underpainting. I hadn't decided till this morning what I really wanted to do. And I think there's just so much green in that photo <clears throat> and I like leaving a little bit of my underpainting showing when I paint. Um, so I've chose the complementary color. Um, and it's it's kind of more of a cooler red. And I'm going to send it to you right now. So <clears throat> the orange sitting on top of the pink, I'm going to mix these two together on the field, the upper field portion, kind of below the, the trees. Um, I kind of want more of a peachy color, warmer peachy color. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna mix these two together. <clears throat> and then I have navy blue, if it doesn't show up, but this is a navy blue new pastel. Um, I'm going to sketch out my drawing just like I do before. And I'm gonna use this on the trees. Uh, or tree, I should say, <clears throat> because that is our darkest value. Does anyone have any questions before we start? I'm going to, um, I'm using UART 400 uh, sanded paper. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and sketch in the underpainting uh, once I block it in, I'll wait, I'll send a picture like I do before, um, and then everyone can either follow along or I'll wait and you can do it after I'm done and just watch. So I'm going to start, switch the camera. And start right now. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Oh, and I forgot my sky color, it fell off. Here's my sky color here, sorry. It rolled. It's like a pink. Okay. <clears throat> so, so I'm thinking- Sorry, Marie, yes. what? Yeah. Go ahead. Could, could this be landscape or it has to be portrait? Oh no, you can do landscape. Um, I cropped it to more of a portrait just because I like having the, the um, 
the the field in front of a tree portion of because this is going to be the focal point is the as the flowers okay um for today and that's a great question so <clears throat> i've kind of made this portion larger so can you see where we have it's basically the rule of thirds right remember so like here's halfway if we put our whole composition in the center it's it's very um it's unappealing it's quite boring um and it doesn't set up our composition very well we want to lead the viewer in remember so um here is our our land and here is our tree so i'm going to be essentially blocking in these shapes just like this and i'm not seeing the top of your picture can you raise your camera oh. yep ah perfect That's better. thank you okay and um just like our tulips we're gonna have a pathway. And so I'm gonna create kind of something like this where it's gonna come off like this. And so this is gonna be darker where the dirt is. This will be lighter because the sun's coming over here, right? We've got the sun shining here. How can we tell? Because the lightness on the trees where it's hitting and the lightness here on the mountain. So I'm going to block this in a dark blue. I'm gonna block this pathway in dark, just like we did in the tulips. And then I'll do a shade lighter with the medium value and then the lightest light here. And then I'm gonna take those two and mix them here in, in this uh, upper section of the field. So that's kind of how I dissected this, this picture. And so, if I'm looking over here on, on my sanded paper, I'm thinking, okay, <clears throat> let's, um, and this is a navy blue pastel. And notice where the tree comes down. There's a shrub right here. I'm not too worried about that bush, but I'm looking at where is this tree hitting? And do you see how it's below the horizon line here? So <clears throat> pay attention to when you're filling in your tree, right? And I am painting kind of sideways. So if it looks a little wonky, sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to. And then I'm just kind <clears> of <throat> filling in with my new pastel. So the point of this is again, we're going to lead the viewer, right? We've got the flowers, the focal point. <clears throat> we don't want our viewer to just stop right here at the, at the flowers. So how do we get them to move through the painting? This is why we're creating this pathway. We get them to the tree. And if you can see in this picture, it almost looks like there's kind of like a um, different planes within the mountain. And that's something I may emphasize a little bit more just to direct the viewer's eye this way. So again, we're kind of working in that Z shape or Z composition. <clears throat> So I'm done with the blue and I'm going to come in with, let's see here. Uh, a mountain. This is just our base layer. We're to essentially toning our paper. <clears throat> and I'm gonna mix those two. Almost like a salmon-y color. Okay. 
And then I'm going to kind of come over with some of that orange. <clears throat> Add a little bit more of this dark red down in here. Okay, <clears throat> let me take a picture of this. So <clears throat> when everyone is ready, go ahead and take a picture where you're at. Let me look at it. And if you don't have exactly the right colors, don't worry. Just try to get as close as possible. Because right now, this is just kind of like our roadmap, giving us an idea of where we're going to put things. <clears throat> nice, Jeannie. One thing to think about too, why I added red down here in the foreground <clears throat> is it's gonna mix together and create kind of a dark purple. And I know that the dark color underneath this picture, the colored picture, I think the yellows and the oranges are gonna pop really nice on that purple. So I just want you to think about like, if you can remove, and this is, and this is just like a, the tulips and every single landscape that we've done. If you can think about what's underneath the lightest lights, and that's the flowers, right? If you can think underneath, well, we have the dirt, right? That's, that's what we're painting right now. And we're gonna build those layers up. <clears throat> And we know that this is distant. You can even see it, it's bluer and purpler than here where this is darker. So that tells you that these mountains are pushed back a little bit farther. Because you move back in space, right? It gets cooler in temperature and bluer. So even in looking at this color picture, I already know that these are kind of pushed back. So, <clears throat> And I think it's going to look really cool with this pinky salmon color underneath that. Okay, everyone, go ahead and send over pictures. All right, nice. Okay. Nina, do you have any more? Um, uh, I would, I would add some of your pink, Nina, down into this area right here. Nice, Julia. Very nice. Nice job, Claudia. Good job, Julia. Very nice. Good job, Mira. Are you on canvas paper, Mira? No, actually, I got the Carson meat, meat and oh, paper. 
Okay. I couldn't yeah. find the other one in my store here at all. I had to order from the Amazon. Okay. The, so I've been uh, I've been putting together a list. Um, okay. Leah asked me to put together a list of like uh, things that maybe I would um, recommend. And I actually found another um, nice. Well, good. Um, I did find another paper like you are. Okay. Um, it's called fitters. And the only thing that I have a problem with the UART, and I think we talked about this last class, that sanded paper is that it, it kind of like buckles. Warps. It buckles. Okay. <laughs> and it drives me nuts. And I feel like I spend a lot of time like taping down. So um, I found another uh, paper called Fisher's. And so I'm kind of thinking about putting that it's, it's reasonably priced like you are, but it's not okay. buckling. Okay. So um, I'll put together. Um, yeah, because I couldn't find you at here, any store, like no Michael's, Staples. I went everywhere. And no. I ended up getting this pastel one then because. Right, like Michael's, and, Michael's and Staples won't have it. Because okay. Michael's oh. isn't a real art store. I mean, it's a craft store. It's not really an art. Not to be like snotty, but okay. the real art stores yeah. are Dick Blick. You probably yeah. have one of those. Uh, there's probably some local art stores in your neighborhood, in your area as well. But a real art store will have it. Michael's okay. will not. And neither okay. will Staples. Staples is an office supply store. So they don't, I mean, they have a little small selection, but they're not going to have the selection that you would expect. Yeah, I was going to. I was looking for gesso too, so I can make my own, but I couldn't even find that either, either. Yeah, they're not, yeah, that's, yeah. Yep, so that's exactly, and I'm glad you talked about this, Mira, because this is a good, because um, you wouldn't know. I mean, yeah. I'm so used to ordering, I know where to go, but you don't know, so. No. Um, I'll write this so down I'll, actually I'll, in the chat. There, there's also Jerry's Artorama. Yeah, that's a online. Mm -hmm. That's on, And okay. that's fine. Um, Jerry's is fine. I've ordered a couple things from them. I generally order from Dick Blick if they don't have like pastel mat. My local um, shop does not have, they don't carry a lot of pastel mat. Um, uh, they do have UART um, paper. Um, I'll also uh, provide you some different pastel sites like Dakota okay. Pastels. Is oh, a Dakota's good site. Pastels is great. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I'll also provide you guys uh, with Leah, we're going to be meeting this afternoon, kind of going over. So if you guys think about things that you're having a hard time getting, or you don't know where, please just put it in the chat today, or okay. you can tell me right now. Um, and that way I can get you a complete list of, of items and where to order them. Um, because it is, if you don't have the right tools, it's going to yeah. be frustrating. Yeah. Thank you. 100%. Yeah. So, okay. Good, Nina. Watercolor. Okay. So, um, let's go ahead. I'm using an alcohol wash, um, like I normally do for the underpainting. So I'm going to go ahead and pour that in right now and start that. I'll switch cameras here. And then again, I'll do that. Um, and then I'll wait um, after I'm done, because we're gonna have to let it dry. So for those who don't have alcohol, you can use Gamsol, uh, which is like a mineral, it's like mineral spirits. It's, uh, this is what I use, Gamblin. Um, if I don't have any rubbing alcohol or the isopropyl, I always say rubbing, but this is what I'm using, the 70%, which is what I prefer versus the 91%. It's just a preference not bad I know uh for a while with COVID it's been hard to get a hold of <laughs> the isopropyl alcohol so um have no fear and you can always use water so I'm again just gonna pour it into my container and I'm going to get my brush here. Let's see. What do I have for today? I think I'll use this. Uh, 
as always, we want to try to keep our uh, alcohol as clean as possible. So I kind of try to go with my lighter lights first. Drips are fine. Don't worry. I quite like the drips. And the whole point is we're literally dissolving this pigment, right? And painting it right into the paper. Now, you probably have made this line like me, right? This dark blue. Um, you know, try to rub it in there, rub it in a little bit. We don't want it to be a complete solid line, right? Because it's in the distance. So. I'm just moving down into the mountain area. I'm pulling up because I'm kind of trying to preserve this lighter color. Coming down into the field. Going a little horizontal, right? Down here, we're going to be vertical because it's closer, and things as we get closer get more vertical. As we move into the distance, things get more horizontal. And it's the same same idea with with our flowers. So it's a good idea to brush our underpainting in that way too. Okay. And I am looking at my reference photo. I'm kind of noticing, see that line? So I'm kind of just thinking about that. And I'll, I'll come back in with more paint. But. Kind of pushing that in. And it's okay, if the paint gets a little thin, we're gonna come back in and reestablish our darks. So don't worry about that. Take your time. More vertical now. As we come down here, the grasses, we're gonna see more grass. We're gonna see more flowers. So I'm painting that way.
Okay. That's about it for that. Boy, and I'm sure, what does it look like, Leah? <laughs> In my monitor, it doesn't look like what it is here. So let me take a picture. It's like distorts the color a little bit. At least it appears that way. How does the color look, Leah? I don't think she can hear me. Go ahead and send over your pictures when you're done. <clears throat> Leah, can you, does it look okay? Like, what color is that pink looking to you right now? It, I mean, it's not the colors that it looks like. It looks much oranger and white. I mean, okay. I think what's really happening is the Zoom white balance kicks in and changes the color. So I'm yeah, not sure what you can, I don't think you can fix with your camera. It Just everybody be aware that the colors that are, we're really noticing this lately, the colors that are um, out, like that are on this screen are not reflective of what's actually happening. You should really look at the thread. I don't know really what to do yep. about this yet. Uh, I'm writing to Zoom to find out what the F is going on because it's terrible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice and bright. Yeah, it does not remotely look as bright and pink and red. Looks kind of pasty orange. <laughs> Okay, so that's how it looks like on my computer is the pasty orange. But then I'm yeah. like, wait a minute. That's that not is what not... this looks like in real. It's much brighter. No, yeah. and I'm wondering if, I, if that helps a little bit. I don't know. It's almost so, like you got to be in dark. If that. Sort of. Yes. <laughs> it's interesting. Very interesting. Wow. Okay. Good. Nice, everyone. Good. That looks really good. We'll wait a few minutes and let it dry. So while we're waiting for it to dry, I want to show you some um, pastels that I've kind of, I sent over a preliminary palette, but with me, it's, I have to sit there and I guess marinate a little bit of what I want to do with it. Because <laughs> um, I don't know. This is I've not painted it before, so um, it's kind of like, good. Good, Nina. I, I can see you got the darker color down below. Good. Um, so I'm, again, just, I have to think about it, like, 
what I want to do. And so I did um, send some pictures. Here's here's some tree colors I'm going to start out with and in the field. So we've got some dark greens and purples. And I also have, so you guys can dig through your, I have these two. And these are all the soft pastels now, right? These are all soft pastels, yep. Yeah, I kind of, um, I've laid out some, some greens and kind of initially just picked out colors and then I, I have to sit there and look at it and then think about it. I did a, um, this is another good idea I do and I'll send it to you. But it's, it's kind of nice to, when you're thinking about doing your palette to, um, scratch colors on here and on us this is just like cans and paper that I've marked these colors and I kind of was just going through with my palette like okay these could be the sky this could be the distant mountains and I'm literally just working from the top down um, and kind of getting an idea of what I want to use and so you know, you can go up to 40 different sticks if you want or keep it simple at 15 sticks. It's it's all in what you wanna do, but really the value is the most important. Um, it, it is always the most important. It doesn't really matter what color you choose as long as you have the value right. And why that's important, I will tell you, is that's the only way I can tell what it is. If I if I don't have this lighter here and this darker, I can't, I, I don't know what I'm looking at. If this was just red and this was red, okay, it's just red. But it gives you a, a sense of perspective, those lights and those darks. That's why it's so important. It gives you the depth. It sets, it tells you that what um, is coming at you, what is lighter, what, how far back. Um, so, the color again isn't necessarily what we want to focus on, although it, it it says hello, it's beautiful, but the value, and that's why we do the black and white. That's the most important, most important. Um, so when I'm looking at my palette and choosing, I'm looking at my colored photo here, and I'll switch cameras so you can see. I'm looking at my colored photo, and I'm thinking, okay. My local color, what is local color? It's what I see. I see greens. I see this is more yellowy green. I see this is light, light blue and purple. That's local color. So when I'm picking my palette, I'm thinking, okay, I see this. And then I'm thinking value. Is it light? Is it dark? Well, we know it's distant mountains. We know it gets lighter and cooler in distance. And so that's how I kind of dissect my picture and looking at my, for my palette colors. And sometimes I have my scratch piece of paper, which I'll show you down here, where I'm scratching on here with my pastels, like, okay, maybe this is the right value, maybe not. Because sometimes when you put those colors next to each other, they, they change. The relationship of the color next to each other changes. It's, it's actually fascinating. So um, I think everyone's ready to start. We're gonna go in and reinstate our darks. And that means we're gonna come back into our tree and our pathway. So the colors that I sent over, I've got the dark green and purple. And I'll just pop this. These are new sticks. And so I'm breaking them in half. <laughs> They're a little too big. Um, I'll take a picture again for you so you can see. And I, and I see you never have the paper on yours, you, that you dispense with that immediately, I guess. What was that? 
I just see you, you never have the paper on any of your pastels. So you, you like that's gone, right? As soon as you get them, you kind of dispense with that. Mine are kind of still in their little wrappers. Oh, yes. Okay. Let me show you my tray. Okay. That's a very good question, Julia. Um, I know this is not the norm, but these are my pastels. Um, so I have them organized neutrals on the left, greens, blues, purples, reds, and yellows. And even within these trays, I've taken all wrappers off and they're a mix of hard, semi-hard and soft pastels. Um, notice at the top of my tray is the dark, dark colors, the dark values, and then I work all the way down to the lightest. When I'm working, it's so easy to, when I'm in the flow and I'm thinking, okay, I need a medium value here. I know, right? Okay, I need a medium value of green. Okay, it's right here. And I can just go reach into my box and grab it because it's organized. So take your wrappers off. I know that you want to save them. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, honestly, what, you're gonna start getting the idea of like what the pastel does. So these two that I'm using are unison pastels. They're soft pastels. Um, they're round. And I'm going to teach you a little bit later um, in the in the class how you can use the round and the square, how to create grasses using those, because they give different effects and they're really cool with texture. And so really knowing what to do, it's just like your paintbrush. How do you use your paintbrush? How do you get, use texture? These are your paintbrushes, the shapes. So really think about that. And I'll show you here in a little bit when we get to the flowers and the grasses. Um, so take your wrappers off. Um, I know it feels weird. I actually break my sticks into smaller pieces. I like using smaller pieces. You don't have to. They're just easier for me. Um, okay, so we're gonna come back in here with the darks. Just, just wait kinda... until the first time you drop your pastel. And then oh, you're like, oh, I, just, I got it everywhere. And then what you'll do is you'll pick up all the teeny little pieces to see which ones you can preserve. Yes, <laughs> it is so true. I did that, Leah, with my orange. Yeah, Look. I bet you did. <laughs> there it is. Total, I dropped it and it fell and I was like, oh, no. We call that a, pa we call that a pastel accident. It happens. Oh, oh. Yeah, you, you save them. <laughs> you save because, man. That's a drag, um, yes. I'm doing a very, very light touch with the purple, and I'm kind of moving back and forth with the green. I'm really looking at this dark, dark part of my tree. That's what I'm focusing on is that shape right now. So I'm just, when I say reestablishing the darks, that's what I'm doing is I'm just kind of coming in and that's why the this underpainting is so nice. And and bushy trees like this are fun too. There's no right or wrong. For those of you who were in beginning drawing yesterday, notice how she's handling the leaves with pastel, a lot like how we did this in the uh, in the class with the trees. She's really making leaf shapes where the one where the where the where there's an edge where light meets dark. So in this case, the bush is darker; it's meeting the lighter background. That's where she's focusing. She's not trying to draw every leaf. Can you see that? Uh -huh. So this is continuation from what we were working on yesterday. Yeah great and I'm going to add some little brighter purples down in here so always thinking about uh, temperature meaning 
warm, cool. Um, we know that the sun is coming here. And so I'm gonna put some warmer colors, warmer and maybe some cooler over here. Um, and so I'm just thinking, okay, I'm gonna add some warmer purples underneath. This is our grass area. And I'll take a picture of these. So you see, it's like a reddish purple. Still very, very light touch, very light touch. And then we're gonna move up the painting this is a warmer green, but lighter in value as we're moving back. And I'm gonna kind of come just very light, very light. The Going tendency is to get very heavy handed with whatever color you're using, just cover up everything. Watch how lightly she's holding it. She's barely touching the paper. And also notice how in this particular case, she's using both vertical and horizontal strokes. Mm -hmm. That creates some... Uh, movement. It's, it's um, movement in the painting and letting that underpainting show. I love it. And so I'll take a picture of this green so you have it, the one I'm just using. I know that this is something, as I watch pastelist artists, I'm like, wait, what color are you using now? What color are you using now? So I kind of want to be aware of that so you know what color I'm using. OK. <clears throat> I'm going to use even a cooler green because we're moving a little farther back up the field. Still light touch. Okay, let's see. Might go ahead and look at these distant mountains. So I've got a few blues and I'm gonna try them out because this is the first time, whoops. I'm doing this right along with you. So here's a range of some blues. I'm using the pastel on its side. This is a semi-hard pastel. It's a Rembrandt. They're kind of nice. Um, I like them. They don't fill the tooth too hard and uh, They have some nice bright colors. So Marie, do, don't forget to stop. Okay. So people I'm can at a good natural point. Don't forget to stop. Yep. I'm going to take a picture of this. Yes. It's Thank tempting you, to want to go on. <laughs> oh, and you're you're right. It's. <clears throat> I really love these uh, hot pink and red and bright, vibrant red uh, backgrounds, uh, <laughs> uh, underpaintings that Marie uses. And you're not able, it's weird. It's a little bit better um, back here. You can kind of see the vibrancy a little bit more, the, yeah. the real colors, but be aware. I don't know why it's not where, anyway. I, it's a Zoom thing. There's something to do with, go ahead and take a look at Sandra's. 
Go ahead and yes. start taking a look at things. Okay, Sandra. So go ahead and use your side of your pastel. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to fill in a little bit more. See how you have those little mm -hmm. marks? Right. We go don't want them. Okay. Don't worry about it. And some of your green go up past your your um, darker area here. So bring it up into your graphs just a little bit more. So it's all kind of moving with each other. Got it. Thank you. Very good. Very good. There you go, Jeannie. Okay. So again, marks, Jeannie. Be be careful of when this is what you want to do, right? Is you want to take it and just drag it like this. We want to take it and very lightly glaze. That's what we're doing. We're glazing over. So you're not going to get as many as those straight marks that you see like down in your lower part of your painting, Jeannie. So just very lightly blend those in a little bit more. Okay. Nice, Anya. I'm just wondering, uh, thank you, Marie. I'm just wondering why I have so many like little dots because I'm trying not to push too hard, but mine's not like smooth, but it's like tiny little dots when I apply it. <laughs> what paper are you using, Anya? Well, it's a pastel paper, but regular pastel paper. It is not pastel paper? paper. Yeah. Are you using oil pastels? No, no, it's regular. It's uh, dry pastel. We checked. So with pastel, it's for sure. And paper, it's just called paper for pastel. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. So it just, it's not, it doesn't feel sanded. No. Is it like no, sandpaper? So. Yeah. So that's why it's it's grabbing your pastel, not um, not as smooth. So you want the sanded paper. Okay, nice, Will. Good. Bring a little bit, uh, Will, bring a little bit more of your lighter green up into right along this edge. Okay. Um, let me switch camera so you can see, but that looks great. Good job, you guys. This is really, this is cool. Nice, Janet. Good. For anybody who's Great. new here, there are a couple of new people. Um, allow yourself, these classes go pretty fast. We uh, are walking you through a project. And if you're new, if you don't have the right materials, uh, if yeah. you've never done this before, um, feel okay that either it's gonna go a little wonky the first time or like just feel free to watch. This video along with every class will go up uh, on the YouTube channel for Art at Work. I'll make sure to send the link across so you all have it uh, and you can retry it out um, later. So yeah, we want to encourage people to jump in, but also know that like, if you don't have everything, it's okay just to watch and slow it down. That's a good point. Yeah. Cause sometimes watching and then watching the video and doing it along where you can control the speed of it. Um, Ooh, I enjoy nice. that too. So good job, you guys. This is Janet, you're that's doing now, that so is great. Vibrant now, Janet, I'm really appreciating that vibrant color. That's awesome. I know. Isn't that cool? Yep. 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 Nina, you're getting a little muddy there. Do you have any recommendations for her? Well, I think it's the paper. Oh, it's the paper. Okay. I think we so. We got to get you better it paper. Yeah, and is it oil pastel? No, they're regular no? chalk pastels. They're regular. So chalk it's got to be. It's just that paper that it's uh, being funky on. She says last time she used cross paper, and what are you using this time? Cross yeah, paper. It's too thin. Yeah. Oh, she's using yeah. Hanson watercolor paper. So, yeah, that's why. Yeah. yeah. So, well, it's not, no, no, no. She's using Canson watercolor paper. It shouldn't be so thin. Mm -hmm. So there's something happening with her layering. Just pay attention to it as you go forward. We'll, we'll keep an I'm eye on it to... as you build it. As you Marie? Build it yeah. When I try to do the very light glazing like you're talking about, it, yep. it seems like what I get is a, is a line 
from this edge and this edge, I get those two lines and it doesn't. Yep. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to, do you have a uh, scratch piece of paper? Not right now, but. Okay. That's what you need to do is you need to cut. This is what I do is I come on here and I go like this to get that flat. Ah. And now I have it flat. Okay. Yes. Yep. Good question. Because it, like, let's see about this pastel here. It might, might do it where you're, where it's not flat. You get like this little met, little line here and little line, like, see, mm -hmm. see that. Yep. That's it. Exactly. It's, so it's really to get in a good habit to kind of do this on your scratch side, even there, see how there's more on this side and less on this. So you really want to get a, a nice, even um, glaze from your pastel. So use your scratch piece of paper and try to get into a habit of like going on that first and then coming up here. I've kind of done that with some of these, but if you see me like going in and putting it on and going, wait a minute, I'll come down here and scratch on it and then come back up. Ah, okay, thank you. Uh, Nina, from what I so, can tell, maybe you haven't let the you didn't let the uh, the alcohol dry before you went on with top layers. Anyway, if that's the case, make sure your alcohol layer dries in between. It should happen pretty oh. quickly. Uh, it's just okay. things are looking a little muddy, and your colors should be sitting nicely on top of each other. So we're trying to figure out what happened. Okay, so anyway, don't worry about it. I don't yeah. want to call you out. I'm just looking. Uh, just be aware no. that you should not, none of you should let, you You don't want to do, if you're using alcohol, mm -hmm. don't, uh, don't lay the pastel on while the alcohol is wet. Because that will create a kind of muddy effect. And what you want is for the alcohol to dry so that your, your top layers won't mix with your bottom layers so much. They'll more like sit on top of each other. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Thank you, Leah. That's, that's important to know too. So good, Mira. Um, I think we're ready to kind of move on to the mountains a little bit. So I'll just kind of work on the mountains. Didn't and you then say I'll, the sky? Uh, I'm not too worried about the sky yet. I'm, I, oh, I'm gonna I thought we took the, out all the blues for the sky. I'm sorry. Okay. What was that, Sandra? I thought we took out all the blues for the sky. No, those blues are, uh, those are for the mountains and oh. I have a couple set aside for the sky. Okay. Um, I have, I'm, I mean, we can put in the sky, but I feel like it's easier to do the mountains first and then carve in around the mountains. So when we're looking okay. at our, our painting, um yeah marie do this do the sky last don't worry use the sky you know what you're doing yeah. it's always a different you guys there's a whole um process here yeah. it's not necessarily intuitive how do you think it's not necessarily intuitive how even i would do it it's not intuitive <laughs> to the the landscape you did yesterday right or on friday because it all depends on all of the pieces so in this particular case just follow a, make sure you're Try not to jump too far ahead. Don't assume you know what the next step is. Yeah. So I'm gonna go back in with some more blue and um, let's see, sorry. Just can't really see very well. Just light, light. This is soft pastel. And notice I'm not going straight in a straight line, okay? I'm coming up a little higher on the left. Remember when we were looking at our paper right here, you kind of want to refer to this too. This is what I'm looking at is this line right here. That's what I'm paying attention to. It is intentional. Even if the mountain doesn't necessarily say that, I am changing it a little bit because again, we're leading the eye, the viewer through the painting and out this way, right? Marie, is that the same blue you had there or is it a different blue? Um, it's just a soft pastel versus the semi-hard of that blue. 
Um, so I'll take a picture of it. So it's the okay. same color? Yeah, it's okay. roughly yeah. the same. Roughly the same. It just has a little more intensity, I would say. But it's because it's soft, and so it's laying down that color a little bit more. And this is, again, you, you get to know how your pastels behave the more you paint with them. I don't want to cover up my underpainting. I like it. it I'm going to keep it. And so I'm being very light touch, very light touch. Something to always think about too in landscape paintings with mountains, even skies. Um, I know that this mountain here is like kind of probably coming down at an angle. You see how it's coming off. We really don't <laughs> want that in, in a painting. We want it to come up like this. So, um, because we really don't, we want the, the viewer's eyes to come up and into the sky versus just dropping off. So, okay. Could this enormous Oh, person. look at Hermes. He's so cute. <laughs> That's hilarious. He's, he, you would not think <laughs> he is only eight months old. He is still a baby, <laughs> but he's just massive. <laughs> he, he is. Like when you show him like next oh to Mooka, my gosh. Oh yeah, he's massive. Here he is. Oh, he's much bigger than her, is he? Yo, oh, huge. Twice. Oh, Twice so the size probably, right now. Yeah. You're probably yeah. worried about that. Don't worry. We've got a lock on this one. <laughs> he is not allowed to do anything rough with her. The moment he does, he leaves. And I'm just using a lighter value because I'm these mountains are a little bit farther back. Lighter in blue. And I'm going to go a little bit lighter. And I'm going to have to turn on my light here because I can't see now. Sorry. Okay. Those are my sky. Okay. I'll just stop right here so you can kind of see. There's lots more to be added to it. But we will kind of get into the sky here now. And I'll wait. Go ahead and send in your pictures if you like. I'm just kind of blending a little bit, not too much. Softening the edges. As we get farther in the distance, things become out of focus almost, softer edges versus hard edges. And the hard edges are always usually more in the front of our picture. So that's where we see the blades of grass. We see the pictures of the flowers being bigger and it becomes softer as we move into the distance. So I just kind of blend a little bit more. You can even use um, the foam pipe insulation. This is always a nice blending tool too. 
and you can just kind of blend. Not too much though, you wanna leave, leave your underpainting, but just lightly dragging it across. kind of fun. Now you can kind of see the difference. See how softening the edges help? Good. Very nice, Jeannie. Yeah, I like that orange background on your picture. It looks nice. Just makes things glow. Nice, Mira. Now, I'm gonna come back into my tree and I know it kinda does look a little bit too perfect round. So just be aware of that. We're gonna come in and kind of just add a little bit of variety and make sure that it's not looking totally completely round. So be aware of that. Um, that looks really good. And bring, and Mary, don't forget to bring some of your dark, dark colors here in the foreground a little bit more. But the mountain looks really good. Good job, you guys. Keep sending over pictures. Nice, Janet. So go ahead um, and blend underneath the tree like I showed you. Once you guys have those color in for the mountain, go ahead and smooth out a little bit underneath the tree just in this grassy area. We're, we're kind of making it out of focus. It's gonna make it push back. Good, Claudia. So go ahead now and blend. Blend in your, your dark blue to your light blue, and then blend some of your green underneath here. And what are you using again for blending? What is that little piece of? This is just pipe foam insulation. You can use um, a rag, like an old t-shirt. If you have an old t-shirt, you can cut it up and use that. You can even use your finger. I don't recommend using a paper towel because it like it'll leave marks on your sand it, it like grabs that paper towel i discovered this great do you all ever get bananas like wrapped in this white foamy stuff oh yeah that works awesome oh my gosh that's a great tip i like it even better than the foam insulation because it's softer it's softer yeah. Oh, good idea. But, but you have to use the right side of it because my one side is a little rougher than the other. And I was getting last last week when I was doing it. Yeah, I was getting scratches. And then I realized <laughs> later I was, it was like paper towel was getting the scratches. I was like, I should have been using the other side of it. <laughs> I, um, I oh, I'm like, excited. Oh, mine doesn't have two sides. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, perfect. Well, let's get into some sky here. I know Sandra's ready for it. <laughs> okay, so these are the colors I've uh, selected for the sky. Nice, Sandra. Oh, good. Oh, I love how you blended the mountains. That looks beautiful. Oh, looks good. really, looks really beautiful. Yeah. Yep. So I'm gonna take a picture. Mm, let me clean my pastels a little bit because they all look so dirty right now. That's another thing is I've got a, a wet washcloth that I wipe my hands off. I just want to jump in here and say, for those of us who were practicing wildflower fields with the paintbrush, 
notice how there is no dot, 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 right? This isn't Morse code. <laughs> like tapping out your flowers in little dots and dashes there it's more like look at i'm just seeing how marie's laying this out see how it's more like blocks of flowers groups clusters that you're dealing with exactly nice. so the idea is is that i've got this cluster of flowers here right and so they're going to kind of come at more of an angle because if we if we have and I'm glad Leah brought this up because this is something, you know, intuitively I know this, but you don't know this. And so why do we not do flowers like this? Because it creates a fence. It like blocks the viewer from moving through your painting. You don't, I mean, once you just see the flowers right there in front, it might as well just paint a barbed wire fence. So this is why we do angles. This is why we do that path, right? That that following through the moving through the painting, that's the whole point of it. If we had lines of flowers directly across, it would just look, it wouldn't look natural. It wouldn't look right. Um, so this is again, designing our, our painting. We're going to have these flowers here at an angle and I'll kind of like this at an angle and then we've got some more flowers here right and then we've got some more flowers down here but we're going to be at an angle to our tree and then off our painting just like that okay so right now we're going to come in with the sky color and let me see if anyone sent in more pictures nice natalia that looks much better good blending yeah, no, that looks good. Looks, looks really very good. Very colorful and nice. I know, isn't that pretty? Nice, Nina, that looks good. And Natalia, I'm really appreciating your mark making here. I'm noticing a shift yeah. in what you're doing. I can see it in yeah. your painting and I can see it in your in your pastel work. So bravo. Wow. Thank you. I I like it. so, now this is how you handle abstracts, right? Look at how abstract this is, but how much um oh. it reads oh beautiful thank you very beautiful you've been working hard i wanted to credit i like to credit people when i see them working pushing yes i've been <laughs> really addicted actually yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that's a light blue this is a light blue i sent over um two colors so as we we come down into the um the sky that meets the land, it's going to be a little lighter in color. And I'm just lightly glazing. Very light because I like the underpainting. And then um, just kind of come back over. I like layering multiple colors than just one color. <laughs> I think it gives it more interest and and you can add clouds in here if you'd like. It's okay to come down into the mountain and this is what I was talking about earlier. Softening the edges. Okay, and I've got come back in. Nope, that's too. And let's see here.
this is a muted purple. I'm just glazing over my blue just a little bit. Okay, let's come back into the tree and let's get a little more. This is um, darker green. Bring some down in here. And let's see. Get some upper grass. And some warmer greens here on the tree. So I'm gonna, I'll take a picture of this for you. So I'm layering, I'm working my way up to the lightest lights. And this is just a very light touch. Just looking at these lighted areas. Okay, and then we've got our light gold. Very light touch. And I've got more of a darker, cooler green, and I'm just going to come right up into the center of this tree just a little bit. And I'll put some of that down in here. And I'll take a picture of it. And I'll take a picture of the tree and sky. Notice we haven't got to the flowers yet. <laughs> it takes a lot to build up a painting. It really does. Oh, it's <laughs> funny how like much we notice of like the flowers and how incidental they are to the actual painting itself. It is. It's it's quite amazing, um, to be honest. It is. Because you just think, oh, no big deal. It's just the flowers, but it takes a lot to build up. Um, so 
So. Send over pictures too. Yeah, your tree looks like a tree. I'm not sure mine does. <laughs> <laughs> You're well, remember yesterday, the lessons of yesterday, Sandra. They're gonna come in handy here. Yeah, but um pay attention to the how where you put your scallopy edges for the leaves. So I had like some sky holes, but there's no sky hole, right? There are not. Yes. So sky holes won't really work here. Yeah, good point. Um, no sky holes would be distracting as well. You only have one center of focus. It's the flowers in the front. So everything else is like much more, um, less detailed. Yep. Okay. It's easy to kind of get anal and obsessive about details. You got to let that go with painting. Okay, you want to get anal and obsessive, cable. right? Like, but not, but, but the right details, the right details. I don't think it's the right shape, but it looks like a tree. Good. That's just a light, light green. And I'm just slowly building up. Oh, it's better, Sandra. Um, Sandra, you've yeah. got a few spike. You've got these like four. You're 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 a slave to pattern, Sandra. It looks like so, a castle, doesn't it? <laughs> right. So you've done like you've got boobs on you've got boobs on your tree. There's fucking boobs on your tree. So get rid of them. We know what boobs are. They're two things that go up like this at the same length, right? In the same distance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like your the way your um, path is looking though. So just scrub, take your finger, Sandra, and scrub it out in a couple places at the top. <laughs> Making it taller. <laughs> no boobs. <laughs> no boobs. No, no boobs. No boobs. It still looks like a castle. Not then you're not doing something right. What did I tell you to do? Get rid of those pointy things at the top. They're like... Um, yeah. What I did is I made it taller. I'm not sure that's the solution here. But it's very difficult to remove. It is not. Use your use the background of your mountain to remove. Oh. Yeah. How about this? Let's see. Uh, come here, you. That's all right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And go ahead and add Wait. more green into your grass, Sandra. Thank you. This was a pale green, right? Medium. Yeah. You'll do a pale green to medium up here, and then the pale will be on the top. Okay. I kind of realized, like I said, as I'm going through this, see this? I like this dip. So I'm kind of nice, Nina. So bring your left hand side of your field up. See how it's kind of going down? Bring that up a little bit more. Good. And you can add more light to your tree over here on the left side. I love your mountains. I love the underpainting shining through. So cool. Just makes it so vibrant. I love it. Nice work, everybody. Mm -hmm. By the way, believe it or not, 90 minutes has gone by. Is anybody surprised by that? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Crazy how fast it goes. I love it. Hannah Vellante. Hi, Hannah. Okay. Welcome to class. Mm -hmm. We have a new person who just hopped in. I'm just saying hello. Oh, okay.
Okay, let's get into the field. Let's do this. Um, I'm gonna, I like these yellow flowers here and I kind of think they're a nice, nice distant color back in there. So I'm gonna lay those in just it's kind of like a um, darker value of a gold, it's like a gold. I'm just gonna very lightly kind of tap my pastel just like this on its side, it's rounded. And then drag with my finger a little bit. Very light. And let's see here. Let's start putting in these flowers. So I like the purple. So I'm I'm gonna do just a little bit of dark purple and then a mute and it's gonna be muted. So a muted dark purple and a muted uh, purple because as we move back in the distance, things become duller, more muted. Um, so Thinking about this shape. Sorry, what did you say was that color? This is like a, a purple. I think it's okay. like a new pastel. Okay. Very, kind of very a light touch. Yeah. So um, more red and a little bit more red. Yep. Blue is a mauvey. <clears throat> so this is the part that I'm going to talk about the flowers and the shapes and how we can use the shape of our pastel to create our flower. So um, I have, this is a square, it's a Terry Ludwig pastel. They're, they're soft and they have hard edges as you can see. And so one really fun way to use these pastels is you can use it on its edge and you can kind of just tap and release, tap and release and see how it gives you that broken mark. So these flowers are upright. So if I have a hard pastel with a hard edge, that's probably what I'm gonna go for because I'm indicating the movement of that flower versus these down here, they're more like cup shaped. And so just pay attention to the shape too and how your pastel can, can be useful in that way. So even grasses, you can use that. Or you can take it, press down, drag up and release. And see, it makes these nice wispy marks. If you have a rounded pastel, um, let me grab a round like this, you can take it and you can move it and wiggle it all over and it makes these kind of wiggly marks. And so you're just holding it and rolling it, rolling it in your hand. I wanna show you the picture. So try, try that with your pastels. The green mark is using the, the round rolling pastel and then the the square creates nice broken um more believable and you can use that for stems flowers so i'm going to come in with this muted um purple and i'm just going to kind of press I'm just tapping and pressing I'm kind of just going like this. I'm 
maybe up in here too. Nothing wrong about it. I'll take a picture of it. And we can even add a, a lighter purple to it if we want. But it's just getting the base down. We're, we know that this is probably going to start looking like flowers. OK. How are we on time? OK. Let's see here. I don't want to run out of time. <laughs> <laughs> so. The poppies in the front. We're going to use a peachy orange color. We're going to use a dark and we're going to build up. What do I mean? So I'm going to do dark orange and then a step up from that to finish off with the light. And I want to show you what that looks like. So it was two different colors. Three. Oh. And I'll show you. So we'll start off dark, then medium, then light. So let's just lay in these dark orange flowers. So I'm just going to take my pastel and just lay a mark, just like that. With a dark. The dark orange, yep. Okay. And um, does it have to be near the, it's below the, um, you have a different group of flowers, right? Yeah. And so, we're just laying them in wherever. Doesn't have to be. Got some over here. He's stepping on my pastel scroll weight double. <laughs> it's what? Kitties are double. getting in the way. <laughs> They've woken up. <sighs> yes, they have about. 90 minutes of distraction in them, right? And then once they've woken up, that's it. It's all over. They were doing something else somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Sandra has, uh, for those of you who don't know, Sandra has three Bengal cats. They appear frequently in her paintings cute. and and in her Zoom screen. They're young and naughty. They're young and naughty. They're beautiful, though. Oh, they my are gosh. fantastic. <laughs> they are so beautiful. But they run the house. Yes, like completely. Sandra, you probably spend more time cooking their dinner than you do your own, oh, right? Completely. You should see the dishwasher. <laughs> it's their dishes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. I'm just. So now these. you move to the other color. Yep, this is the medium orange, and I'm just hitting those. So really Below or you above. using the, the really bright one? Because it's looking almost salmon pink on the Zoom. <laughs> yeah, so here. On the... you, you're hitting below or above? Um, no, just the dark orange and the medium orange. Yeah, but which one is above? It doesn't matter. Which one is um, higher I... than the other? I well, I do the so the dark is underneath and oh. and the light generally is on the on the top and so as it moves to the top but some may have a little lighter. I didn't do exact, but that's a good question. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So we haven't done the third color yet, right? We oh. haven't. Okay. Nope, we haven't. So. Can you show me that we can do that you're using again, how, how you're making that mark on the paper? For those yes, colors? absolutely. 
So I just took my orange and I went like this. Okay. I just took it from the base and went up. And this is why I like smaller pieces when I'm doing these little petals, these flowers, they're easier. And then I took the next medium color and I didn't start at the bottom. I started about halfway up and I went like this. And then now I'm gonna come to the top part of the flower and hit it with the real bright light orange. And I'll take a picture of this so you can see. Good question. Very different on the Zoom. Very different. Yeah. And I may use even um, a lighter orange color over here with the sun kind of coming down over on this side, just for some visual interest. I'm kind of just hitting these and I'm going to leave these down here with not the real bright, bright. Because oh. I'm basically saying that these are, these are hitting the sun and these are kind of down a little bit farther. I do see some really fun purple flowers down in here. It's almost like a periwinkle color. Let's see what I have might be And this is like a, I'll take a picture of it. You can really do whatever you want with where placement wise with the flowers. I mean, I just, I just saw this as I got up a little closer. There's some really pretty purpley blues in there. And let's see. I got some lemon yellow here. Let's see. Yeah, good, Sandra. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Yay. go ahead and bring up some of those purple flowers. Just kind of bring them up into here. Don't be afraid. Uh, you mean the stems or the uh, little flowers? Yeah, the the purple, the the hard edge that you use. Those look so great. I did with your bring pastel. them in there, but but my green is so yeah. light that they can't be seen. Oh, so yeah, so come right up the path. You just bring them up a little higher. Oh, let's see, got it, got it. Right. Yeah, yeah, that looks great. Yeah, I love it. And so, and you can make your orange marks a little bit bigger down here, remember? Because they're gonna be, they're, they're kind of up in front. So don't be afraid to make those flowers bigger. I know they- okay. They look kind of small here, but the focal point is our flowers. So those are going to be, yeah, bigger. Oops. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Nice work. Good job, everyone. Yeah. yeah. These are looking awesome. I love it. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> it is really okay. great to see. Oh, very nice, Sandra. Beautiful. Love yeah. it. Love it. Yeah. Uh-huh. But getting it. Nice work, you guys. Marie, Marie might actually spend, you know, like Marie might spend another two hours futzing with this if she wanted to. <laughs> yeah. I teach a class after this and she jumps in and she usually just keeps on working. <laughs> it's good. It's fun and you get you learn edges. This is all about edges. 
You have your soft and your hard, you have your lights and your darks. So how do you push and pull things towards you? It's all about your edges. And look, I put all of my flowers right in a straight row. So. <laughs> so she's making them, so even Marie does it. Little soldiers. <laughs> If little you hear soldiers. me use the word you know, little soldiers, that is not good. <laughs> you're fired, Marie, you're fired. I know, right? Right. Oh, <laughs> I'm working so hard to get them out of the habit. Actually, I do it too. That's why I know. <laughs> so oh Jean, that's looking quite right. nice. At the bottom left, yeah. are these like some white flowers or green? Fantastic. Light green or um, down below, I have, I have those kind of like a light yellowy, but Good. they probably are more of a white, um, but they're diffused a little bit with the light, so it's blurred out, but look at the value, so it's light. Okay. Um, look at it compared to those purple flowers or even the orange, right? Nice, Nina. Oh, fun. Look at Good that, recovery. Jamie. Woo! I know, isn't Jean's looking not nice. they're all great. Look at Janet's, look at uh, oh, Jean's. Cool. Look at I love Janet, I love the way you've dispersed your flowers. Jean's, you've got yes, a little bit of beautiful. soldier, you've got a little bit of soldier action going down there with the oranges. You know what to do. <laughs> Bring a couple up, a couple down. Nina, really nice. See how nicely those flowers sit on top, those colors sit on top of the dry pastels. Looks mm -hmm. very nice, wonderful. And look at how different they are. And Notice um, how different these are. There's so much room for playing around. That's what I love, yes. Yes. Marie, we don't do anything about yeah. the orange flowers. We don't do anything about stems. Not okay. yet, we haven't got to those oh. yet. Uh, just, like, just like the tulips, those kind of come in, the grasses and the stems are gonna be the very last last piece of it um and so this kind of the time where uh we're refining we're looking at everything we're saying should we adjust here should we adjust here um nice well good yeah beautiful. don't be af don't be afraid to bring your purple out even into this other grass area don't be afraid okay um i haven't yeah like just add some in here and I want to visit this place wherever it is. You know, I got it off the <laughs> I got it off the Facebook um, free reference yeah. photo. So I we could probably find out where it is, but isn't it I can't remember off the top of my head it's, where it is. It's beautiful. It is gorgeous. I'm just adding, um, this is a light, oh, nice, Sonia. Good. I love, I'm, love. Uh, I'm struggling a bit with the paper. I don't know what's going on today. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's because like, it's, it's not uh, it's sanded. Cause it's because you're using the pastel paper, which none of us like very much. You'll yeah. see it's got teeth meaning it's got little dips and crevices. I don't know why they sell this as pastel paper. I think it looks- ugly. I don't know. Um, so don't worry, do the best you can, but like be aware. I like how your flowers are in the front on you. Nice. But be aware that the instead of sitting on top and poofing out, it tends to dip in. It's hard to get those teeth covered. A canvas is like that too. Yep. Yep, I agree. It's kind of, it's frustrating, so. Yep. So believe it or um, not, we've got about 13 minutes left, Marie. So okay, so last let bits. me, yep. So before we go and add in our, our stems and our grass, um, let's go back in and I want you to look here. Um, we want to kind of cover up that path a little bit. So if you guys can really see that dark, dark line here, I want you to come over and glaze, meaning horizontally take nice, your light Mara. green and just glaze over. So these two 
areas are mixing. So like Mira, now you're gonna, that looks great. So now let's take your uh, light green and kind of come over that dark area right in here. Okay. We want it just, we want it just to kind of show through because that's your ground, your dirt, that dark area. So you okay. want to make it look like you've got grass over it, right? Okay. Which means so you we see a little just, bit of it coming through. Yeah, just a little, a bit, little of bit coming through. But great job on your mountains. Mm -hmm. You really paid attention to those values. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, here's something else yeah. I wanted to add to Marie's um, uh, yeah. comments about values. Here is yeah. why values are important. Uh, you are working with a flat surface and you're trying to create the illusion of three dimensions of the ability to come backwards and forwards into the paper, right? Rather than a windshield wiper, which is really what you do. The way you do that is to show shifts in light. So when you see an edge where dark meets light, that suggests a shift in light for us, right? Because where the dark is, the light is not reaching. That means the sub subject is, is turning away from the light. So, mm -hmm. so darks and lights are very important to push even more <clears throat> than what's actually happening in the photo sometimes because that's all you have to create three dimensions, right? On a two dimensional surface. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Oh, Leah. Sandra, nice. Now look at how bright those are. Love your background. Trees looking good. Oh, yeah. Good. Good. We don't so, see um, much difference between this kind of mountains, but is that okay? So I like how it, yeah. do you like how it looks? You asking me? Yeah. Do you like it? Sort of. If I'm you like it, sure. it works. I'm not sure it reads, but. So if read. you, okay. I think it looks fine, Sandra, yeah. but if you want it to change a little bit, it's where your edge of your mountain nice. and your sky nice meet. Job, you guys. So if that's the I've, change, but. I've kind of so added an edge there, but I suppose it could look like mist. I think it's pretty. I like it. I, I think like it's it. Beautiful. I like it too. I like it too. I love those happy accidents. You're like, oh, I didn't mean for that to happen, but oh, doesn't it look good? And it looks so much. <laughs> And it looks, yeah, so see how you've covered over that path now? You, it, it reads, that's the dirt underneath. And it grabs your eye. That's what we're trying to do. So bring some of that lighter green down, maybe just a shade darker down into your flowers a little bit more. That looks okay. really good. Yeah. Good job. Great work, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the whole idea of this path is that's your, your dirt underneath and it's it's darker so it takes your eye and follows to that tree and then we glaze over it with the grasses and it gives a real nice effect. Ooh, I love your grasses, Jeannie. <laughs> your flowers are pretty. <laughs> yeah, she's really starting to push color and nice in, a, in, a, in exciting ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that I feel like, Jean, you've kind of grasped uh, values and your drawing is improving, you're yeah. really beginning to nuance your color <laughs> in a wonderful way. It's really wonderful to see. Good. Good. Well, so now all we need to do in yours is just blend your, your areas up in your tree where your dark meets to that next color. That's beautiful. Now just take your finger and blend just a little bit so you don't see that line in your tree. And then same with the purple flowers into the grass. Just kind of blend those together. Looks really pretty. Good job. You guys are killing it. Yeah, I love how you guys have really kept the underpainting shining through. Good job. So this is a good example of why we need an underpainting. Yep. This it just makes it pop. Good, Mira. Oh, oh Julia, wow, Julia. Nice I love it. Oh, I love how vibrant these <laughs> flowers oh, are. They really are. Nice work, you guys. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> That's cool. Sandra, this is just really looking good. I like it. And Mira, yeah. I like it too. I even like, I, so notice Mira's using more 
sort of bluey greens, which is sort of casting a whole new look. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, Natalia, it's gorgeous. Oh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and girl. Janet, wow. Good <laughs> job. <laughs> Score. Uh, now, look, for those of you who haven't done this, look at how she's organized her flowers. They are not mm -hmm. like little soldiers in a row. They are, a few are up, a, one or two are down. Yep. So if you can all do that. So Mira, you've got, I see you've got them sort of collected, but if you could make a couple of your flowers <clears throat> a little bit bigger in the front, okay. down at below, you're going to be, you're going to like that. You're going to like that random feeling. God, mm -hmm. that's gorgeous. Good Bravo, job, Janet. Guys. Bravo. So the fun part, right, always is uh, we put in some stems and grasses and I love the new pastels for these. I've got an assortment of them. I'll take a picture. These are some like fun greens. Molly is saying, Molly hey, is mom. saying mama, come and play with me. Are you going to say hi? I'll take a picture. Let's Molly, see. Molly bye, bye. come here. Can you see her? You guys see Molly? Thank you. Oh, hey. hi. Molly doesn't no, like, see, has, see. Molly has separation anxiety. Let's see. Where is, where is she? She's on the bottom there. I don't did see did you see the picture? No. I just sent oh, it. Picture. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. She's getting big. She is getting big. She is. She's almost a year in um, March, March 4th. But she certainly sounds like a little baby still, doesn't she? Oh, that's, that's her mom, mom. Oh, no. Yeah. Her what what are you doing? Don't leave me. So yeah. this is great. I'm going to remove the spotlight now, you guys, because we're getting close to the time. Uh, and oh, move it. <sighs> um, yes. And I, and let's go to gallery kinda, view. But uh, we haven't done the stems yet. Oh, you haven't? Oh, all right. Yeah. I'll pop the stem. Do that we'll do quick and then we'll do that. Here, sorry. Yeah, I'm just using these <laughs> new pastels. Nice, Claudia. Yeah, good. Nice success, Claudia. Very, very nice. If you want one little suggestion while Marie's showing you how to do stems, you could put a little bit of slightly lighter yellowish green on the top of your tree in the back. It'll help, help it stand out from the mountains behind it. By making the um, value a little bit We do bit the stems lighter. only for the orange or for all of them? I'm just doing the, the ones up close. Okay. So only this the ones push. that are at the bottom yeah. of the page. Yep. Nice. Nice. Jean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Jean's finding her color groove. Oh, yeah. So I is Claudia. It. So is Janet. So is everybody. Great work, you guys. I didn't really overdo great. it with the orange. I added a lot more poppies. Ha, that's okay. You can do whatever you want with this painting. You got, The truth is, now that you guys have this, you can do whatever you want. Oh, look at what she, Marie's doing. So she added in some we're green. Doing, doing. And she's then put in a little bit of purple around it. So see how she's not drawing out every stem? She's more doing... Marie, say what you're doing. Um, so this is where you kind of just get in and you say, I just need some color here and I need some color there. And <laughs> so I'm adding some really, I'm putting in my bright. Um, so she's not drawing every stem. Nope. She's drawing only a couple of sharp lines for stems leading from the orange flowers that are the biggest ones, which will be down towards the bottom of the page. And then she's adding in little bright color pops. Looks like kind of a greenish blue. It's hard to tell, of course. Take a picture like a of her, picture. Marie, so we can yeah. see it. And you're not like allowed a... to work on this anymore in front of nope, them. It's I'm too done. tantalizing. It's I'm... too tantalizing. Yes. 
Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Look at how. Oh my God, it's ridiculous. So she used little bits of purple, little bits of kind of that light green. So you see, there's only a few suggestions of stems in the front, just one or two. So that's a lot like the wildflowers that we did yesterday, where we only had one or two, yet we did a painting this week, where you only have one or two, like just a couple stems that you do with that one bristle. I'm still thinking. This is my favorite part, like at the end, where you can kind of just have fun with color, right? Yeah. Add those bright pops. This is this is like impressionism. Suggestion, suggestive. Oh wow, everyone's. I love it. We did good. Like we're right at two hours. <laughs> yeah, really nicely done. All right, so now I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna remove the spotlight. We're going to okay. go into gallery view. I want everybody to just hold up their pieces. If you can turn on your, if you can turn on your video camera, please do. And you feel like it, please do. Oh, Sandra, there, God, that's really great. Wow. Wonderful. Natalia, great. The first one I'm happy with. Yeah, you're starting to get there, right? This whole layering of color. Yay! Look nice at you work, guys. you guys. Janet, nice. Actually, what I should do is. Nice, Jean. Nice. Julia, let's see it. William, oh, gorgeous, gorgeous. Anya, let's see. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. So I also want you to observe, you guys, that these colors are not the same as they would be in yeah. uh, real life. Okay, so two announcements. One, as usual, that this class will be available as a video in about an hour on our YouTube. Uh, the second thing is that I am going to schedule two acrylic painting materials lessons. These are free on Tuesday, February 16th. There will be one at European after work time. There will be one at New York after work time. So you are welcome. So there's not gonna, we're not gonna make a painting. I'm gonna go over with you basic brush basics, mixing basics, just a basic, it should probably take about an hour, maybe 90 minutes. Um, this was a request from uh, one of the coordinators, and I think it's a great idea. Just And if you can't make it, that will also be recorded, and we'll make sure you guys get the recording. So if you're wanting some basics on using the brush with acrylics, like, you know, what, like how to make things look less watery, what are the different kind of marks you can make with the brush, um, just some sort of brush care, like just some sort of basic brush techniques. Uh, and materials. We are going to do that on February 16th. So I will send out the exact times. And if you can't make it, don't worry awesome. about it. Um, but for those of you who are doing painting, I think it will be helpful. So great work, you guys. Yay. 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 That's good. This, is, this isn't this is easy, you guys. This is a lot of information. So they really you did amazing. Do. They yeah. really do. Anya, nice, like, pull in there. Sandra, God, they really do. They just look great. They're beautiful. And they're all they different. Notice how they're all different. That's good. We don't want you to paint like us. We want you to use our technique. No. We want you to use our technique. We may be riding you the whole class, trying to tell <laughs> you, get your values straight, pay attention to your mark making. No little soldiers. Beautiful, Julia. But in the end of the day, you're still going to make something that's uniquely you. And that's yep. what we want. Oh, beautiful, William. Ah, wow. <laughs> I know. Really, you guys. Brag it up, you and guys. <laughs> honestly, what a difference even just from the tulips, right, to this. Yeah, it's you've like, all jumped. You've all made a leap. each. Really? Time. Imagine where you'll be at the end of uh, a, a two months. Imagine where you'll be at the end of six. Imagine where you'll be at the end of a year. Yep. It's amazing, like where you'll be. And then believe it or not, because people like Janet and Jean have been doing this a while, they'll tell you yeah. after the first year, there's so much more to learn. So <laughs> it's not like you get there and then you think I've got this. Then you get to go back. Like, it's just, uh, it's like building a wall with little bricks. One of my favorite artist friends, uh, when I lived in Armenia, I had a friend, a bunch of artist friends. One guy was a sort of hip, cool dude named Arshak Sarkisian, uh, 
who is like sort of split his time between London and like Yerevan where we lived. And Arshak would say, this is what art, and he, he put it so perfectly. Each class is like a brick that you put into a wall, right? Each class is a building block. And then before you know it, you have a beautiful wall, but it's like brick by brick. You have one little success maybe a couple failures, right? And then you take it to the next, you have another little bit of success. Then you take it to the next and you have more success. You can continue to build on your uh, success forever. It doesn't ever seem to end. Like where Beautiful. you can go and how you can go with it. So I just really like watching the progression, progression here. Me too. Good job, yeah. Janet. Yeah. One, before I leave, it's always good. If you guys have a frame, <clears throat> I have found, and this is just a tip, oh, I have yeah, found, Jesus. like, <laughs> put it around your painting when you're done, and man, does it help. Show us. Uh, I'll show you, like, all of a sudden you can see, oh, I need to fix this, I need to fix that, so let's say I'm going to frame it like this, and then all of a sudden I'm seeing the edges, and I'm like, ooh, Maybe I need to fix this edge over here. Or maybe I need to bring this out cooler. It's amazing what a frame, and I'll take a picture, does. Um, so that's just another tip. Um, You're full of tips today, Marie. <laughs> Looks great. <laughs> Looks great. Nice work, everybody. All right, you guys. Um, we will Yay. see you. So, oh, and another reminder that, like, another reminder that, um, and Marie and I were talking about this. If you're new at this, we would recommend that you take beginning drawing on Saturdays. That's actually as important as anything you do with color. Because Absolutely. if you're if you're not getting your you're not seeing your shapes, you're not getting your shapes right, you're not going to have as much success with the colors. So just consider that like the beginning drawing class, which is uh, just a half an hour later on Saturdays, um, you should jump in and do that. Like, right, that'll help. Even though we're not working with color, you're gonna learn a lot about value and a lot about shape making uh, that will transfer over into this class. All right, you yep. guys, great work. Everybody's looking very pleased. Some of you are looking tired and some of you are <laughs> looking pleased with yourself. <laughs> we wore them out, Marie. <laughs> I know, you guys worked hard. Good job, yeah. I'm proud of you. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next week. Great work. Wonderful Thanks work. Thank you. Everybody. Video will be up shortly. Great. Bye. Bye.